All right, that was like a super weird like 20 minutes for me. Whew. All right, now we're back. Hey, I'm starting here in a section 11.4. And I'm going to talk about multiple phases. And, oh, man, hang on. Right. Okay. Second, I understand the role of vapor pressure in the change of state between liquid and gas. I just talked about that in the last video when I mentioned pressure cookers and boiling things at high temperatures. Third, interpreting phase diagrams. That's what I want to spend most of my time in is this third part here, interpreting phase diagrams. So moving on, moving on. Two-phase systems, that's pretty easy. You got like ice water, liquid, solid, same thing. Okay, phase is a region that has the same composition of properties throughout, and you'd be like, duh. But when we get to the phase diagrams, you'll see probably more what we're meaning there. Uh, dynamic equilibrium exists when particles are constantly moving between two or more phases. We usually think that something's just in one phase, but what's actually going on in like the water and the ice system is that some of the ice is melting and and uh, some of the water is freezing if, if we've got this at like zero Celsius. So there's a dynamic. Dynamic means things are moving. An equilibrium meaning over the whole, everything looks like it's staying the same, but we've got like plus two, minus two going on constantly between two phases. For instance, they say if you've got a bottle of uh, rubbing alcohol and it's all bottled up, you've got vapor in there inside the open space and you got the liquid and then when you open it up the vapor comes out and more of that alcohol goes into the gas phase okay but when it's closed up you've got the same amount of liquid becoming gas as gas becoming liquid because they're contained in a certain amount of volume the rate at which the phase changes are going is the same when the phase change increases it's more um, solid or sorry solid liquid to gas then gas back to liquid then we're gonna see the volume change and we're gonna have obviously more of that uh, gas would evaporate more of that alcohol would evaporate and become a gas put that in your hat dynamic equilibrium okay for an enclosed gas and liquid equilibrium the gas particles above the liquid exert pressure when they strike the walls of the container and then when you release the pressure they go out there's that specific point though when they're in equilibrium called the vapor pressure you actually see this in the weather reports where they'll talk about um yeah i'll talk about uh like precipitation and then they, they use vapor pressure in there to let you know how much water that the um the air is holding is it is it going to be wet is it not going to be wet those kinds of things. And again, the boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the external pressure. If you exceed the boiling point, okay, if you, you're lower than the boiling point, we've got different constraints going on. We're talking about, anyway, we're talking about equilibriums here, kind of like we had the boiling point and, and uh, freezing melting points when we did uh, the, oh, I don't know, what was it called when we did, like practice A calculating them using thermodynamic information <laughs> moving on as you increase the temperature in a closed system more liquid particles escape into the gas phase and that's a really scary thing when you release the pressure right really scary thing because gases can hold a lot more energy than uh, than liquids can that means they can be at much higher temperatures as well so if you release the cap and steam goes out like in a pressure cooker that steam is really superheated it's not just like 110 degrees celsius it's like lots and lots of degrees celsius so as you increase temperature the vapor pressure goes up too in an enclosed um, container when you increase the temperature of a system to the point at which the vapor pressure of a, of a substance is equal to standard atmospheric pressure you have reached the normal boiling point for that substance Okay, standard atmospheric pressure, like one atmosphere, or it's like a thousand and one kilopascals or something like that. That's our normal boiling point. So we can increase pressure and we can change that boiling point. We can release pressure, we can change the boiling point. Okay. So you get pictures like this where we see that at various temperatures, for these are for different substances here in the graph, uh, the normal boiling point 
would be the dotted line. And so let's go over here for water and go right there. And you note that this is at 100 Celsius and at uh, 760 millimeters of mercury, that's one atmosphere, that's normal atmospheric pressure. But if you drop that pressure, you drop that vapor pressure down, then we're following this line and we can get like, we can get uh, water to boil at 80 degrees if we're only at 375 uh, millimeters of mercury. That would be sucking a lot of pressure out. But uh, maybe we go up to 600. We trace it over here and we've got it about um, 92 maybe would be our temperature if we're at like 600 for our atmosphere. Um, and you can even, if you increase the pressure, like in a pressure cooker, then the line goes up for this way and you can keep stuff at higher temperatures and they will remain. Uh, they won't turn into a gas until they get to a higher temperature. Ethanol, that's a normal like uh, gas, um, it's an alcohol, it's just rubbing alcohol. And then you got diethyl ether, even lighter. And you can see here that it will boil at about room temperature, or a little bit higher, just slightly above room temperature. So usually diethyl ether, you have to keep cooled so that it stays in the, most of it stays in the liquid phase. Uh, average kinetic energy of molecules increases about 3% for every 10% uh, degree, 10 degree increase in temperature, yet the vapor pressure about doubles or triples with the same type of thing. So you got uh, the 35 versus uh, 25 degree temperature in here. We've got this gap here between when the red line is at the same place as the blue line, more or less. Okay. Average kinetic energy at 25 versus the average kinetic energy at 35. You definitely got some changes there. And you got this error over here showing you that's how much it's different. 10%. You can read about that in your book. Uh, let's go on to the phase diagrams. Uh, substance state depends on temperature and pressure. I got those two things up here behind me. Temperature and pressure. International Space Station is live now, everybody. Who cares? Phase diagram, then, is for one specific type of, of chemical. Maybe it's an element or maybe it's a, um, a compound a molecule like water. And it'll have all that pressure and uh, temperature information for you that you can interpret as far as phases go. It'll tell you. The relationship between the physical state, solid, liquid, gas, or and the temperature and pressure. So uh, it has three lines, and you'll see more about it in the video too, that you need to watch for Tuesday. One line shows the, the liquid gas equilibrium where they're uh, right on the edge of which way is it going to go between liquid and gas. Another line for liquid and solid, and a third line for solid and gas. Remember, we have all those different phase changes available to us. We have six phase changes available to us. If we go over the line one way, we got one phase change. We go over the line the other way, we got another phase change. There's three lines. We can go over each line two ways to get all those different phase changes. And all those lines will meet at one specific point called the triple point of that substance. The right pressure and temperature, all three states can exist at the same time. That's pretty cool. So this is the phase diagram for water. It's got the important points noted on there. We'll note here's the triple point where uh, this line and the line B and the line C and the line, I guess this is line D, where they all meet. Okay, so for water, it would be at 0 0.01 degrees Celsius, so almost freezing and a very, very, very low pressure. So you can have something boiling, that would be in the vapor state, uh, freezing, that's in the solid state, and a liquid at just above our normal freezing point, but very, very low pressure. Low pressure, low temperature, you can make something. You can make water boil. Now this line here is the boundary between solids and vapors. And so if you uh, have a specific pressure, temperature, um, set up right here you can just you can actually you, you drop the pressure you'll be down into the green area now if you increase the pressure a little bit you'll be in the orange you'll be in solid again 
You can also increase the temperature from a certain pressure and go over here and now be in the vapor phase. And then you got this line here, C is the boundary line between, or is the equilibrium line for solid and liquid. So right along this line here, you're going to have the melting freezing process. Um, this makes sense. If I'm over here uh, at a certain temperature and pressure, if I raise the, the temperature a little bit and go this way on the chart, now I'm in liquid phase. And if I keep increasing the temperature, eventually I'm going to go into the vapor phase. Or I might be right here in the liquid phase and I drop that pressure down in a fairly straight line to keep the temperature normal. I'll be in the solid state. So that's the line between solids and liquids. And then this line right here is the boundary line or the equilibrium point for liquids and vapors. And uh, if we're right here at like 100 degrees Celsius and a fairly good pressure, you're going to have the liquid phase. And if you keep increasing the temperature, eventually you turn into a vapor. Okay, let's say you're at 100 and you start dropping the pressure. Well, then you're going this way and then you're going to drop over from liquid to vapor. So this picture describes all those different changes. Uh, then a few important points. Our normal melting point is right here at letter F at 0 degrees Celsius and 101 kilopascals. That's our normal pressure for atmosphere. We've got the triple point, which we already mentioned. We got our normal boiling point at 101 kilopascals and 100 degrees Celsius. And then we got this point way up here called the critical point, where you've got super duper heated liquid. And then at a certain point, nothing can stay liquid or a solid. All has to become a super critical fluid. You got a super heated, high energy vapor type of thing going on. You've got chaos. We rarely reach that. 374 degrees Celsius, and a very, very, very high pressure. That's scary stuff, okay? Most of the time we're, we're hanging out down here in this region, uh, usually along this line, but if we go higher up in elevation, then that pressure is going to drop, and we can be in the vapor phase sooner. That means we can boil, go from liquid to vapor at a much lower temperature than normal. And uh, some of these other weird things can happen down here with the solids to vapors as well at extremely low pressures and extremely low temperatures. Water obviously is the, is the easiest one to get your uh, brain around. There are uh, phase diagrams for lots of different substances, but this one makes sense for water. Um, okay, so for any given point on the chart, X, Y, or temperature pressure, uh, you can see in what state the water will be. For example, I'll go back to the thing really quickly. If you're at 90 degrees Celsius and you're at 101.3 kilopascals, then we're in the liquid region. 90 degrees Celsius, 101 kilopascals. 90 degrees Celsius, 101 kilopascals would be right here, right here on our chart. Okay, liquid. Some of them more obvious than others. And here, these slides, you can pause and you can read it or you want to write stuff down. Uh, Jacqueline, you take excellent notes. Boys, Jacqueline takes excellent notes. Uh, it's explaining what those lines are. So you can um, read these and then go back and look at that picture. Or I printed them off for you as well, I think. Uh, maybe I didn't. It's been a long couple of weeks. So there you go. You got critical points, supercritical fluid. AC so it shows solid liquid equilibrium. Only solid is present to the left of AC. Water's kind of weird when it works this way. You'll see on the next on the next chart that the uh, the setup doesn't look exactly the same. I guess you guys would be kind of be like that. It won't look exactly the same as this. This slope thing I think will be over like that. And you'll see that so slightly you should compare the water one with something else and see what's different about water. We already know water's special for that angle thing right 104.5 degrees rather than 109 and a half degrees um, hydrogen bonding all that kind of stuff it's special so let me actually go forward to one of the other phase diagrams as we said each pure substance has its unique diagram although the general structure is the same um, how to draw we don't care 
There's another one, and this is for carbon dioxide. You see the slope's a lot different here, and then this slope is, looks different. This looks pretty much the same, uh, but you've got different numbers along the uh, x-axis for temperature, and you've got, there's our normal pressure here at 101. So you would think, obviously, there's got to be more for carbon dioxide to do up here, where it's usually in the vapor phase. Um, it would be getting it into the solid or the liquid phase, which would be the interesting thing. So you got to keep it pressurized, which makes sense. Uh, liquid carbon dioxide uh, has got to be under pressure, or it's got to be really super cold if you want to keep it that way to pour it out. It would love to be a vapor in normal pressure. So if you raise that pressure, you can get it to be a solid at really cold temperatures. Or at all three states right here at 518, that's about five times normal pressure and uh, a really, really super cold. Room temperature would be somewhere around here. It's obviously in the vapor phase at room temperature unless you super crank up the pressure and then you can get it to be a liquid. So again, I, I encourage you to look at and compare the water one to the carbon dioxide one. You've got both of them in your book. They're right next to each other on page 402 and 403. Um, yeah, note how line C is a little bit different in those two and how the scales are obviously different as well because we're working with something that's almost always a liquid that we're used to and almost always as a gas what we're used to. Um, yes, I already mentioned this stuff. And that's all for that. If you'd like to, um, you can go back and rewind and pause and write some notes down. You should do that. Uh, I'll be seeing you this week to get things ready for the lab, which involves uh, phase changes of a uh, simple organic compound, which has a fairly low melting point. And I'll uh, get you set up for that. Um, otherwise, it's just a few other little things that we put down on that list. And so uh, stay up on your stuff and make sure that uh, if anything's missing, you go back to the latest thing and, and work your way forward. It's easier for me to grade things that way. I mean, it's easy yes, to grade things if you get, get them in on their due dates, obviously, um, that you don't get dinged for late, late, late stuff. Anyway, that's section 11.4. That's uh, the rest of the actual information we got for this week. The rest of it is you filling out paperwork and, and uh, taking care of the lab. Should be kind of interesting, I think, the lab. Um, Though part of it is just watching water heat up, so that part won't be too terribly awesome. Rest fit, you might get a kick out of. Um, all right, hopefully I'll see maybe one or two of you soon, and we'll get you set up for that lap.